Good day everyone, so we are now finally at the chapter 14 and we will be talking all about the adaptation model by Sister Kalista Roy. So there are many contents that we will be talking all about today. So um, her history and background, theoretical sources, major concept and definitions, use of empirical evidence, and so on and so forth. Um, for this um, chapter, we will be talking all about um, the other perspective of um, nursing. In uh, the field of nursing, we will be uh, seeing new um, side of nursing or how nursing was um, created or how nursing was being um, improved uh, every uh, nurse theorist. So, as you can see um, in the first slide, the changing environment stimulates the person to make adaptive responses. For human beings, life is never the same. It is constantly changing and presenting new challenges. The person has the ability to make new responses to these changing conditions. As the environment changes, the person has the opportunity to continue to grow, to develop, and to enhance the meaning of life for everyone. So this is according to Andrew and Roy in the year 1991. So um, in this um, quote-unquote sentence alone, we can already see or overview what um, the adaptive model of Miss uh, Sister Kalista Roy um, have. So from this point, um, we can already see how this adaptive model works. So we will furthermore uh, discuss about that later in the next slides. So first things first, we have to get to know who Sister Kalista Roy is. So Sister Kalista Roy is a prominent nurse theorist, writer, lecturer, researcher, and a teacher. Um, she is also a professor and nurse theorist at the Boston College of Nursing in Chestnut Hill. She was born in Los Angeles on October 14, 1939, as the second child of Mr. and Mrs. Fabian Roy um, um, in the St. Joseph Car Carondelet. She entered uh, the Sisters of St. Uh, Joseph Carondelet. Um, she also earned a Bachelor, of, Bachelor of, of Arts with major in nursing from Mount St. Mary's College, Los Angeles in the year of 1963. She also earned her master's degree in pediatric, pediatric nursing from the University of California, Los Angeles in 1966. And another thing is that she also earned a master's degree and PhD in sociology in the year 1973 and 1977, respectively. So how amazing is that, right? Um, after working as a staff nurse and in administrative position at St. Mary's Hospital in Tucson, Arizona, and St. Joseph Hospital in Livingston, Idaho, Roy joined the faculty of Mount St. Mary's College in year 1996. She also served as department chair between the year of 1971 and 1982. So, medyo taas-taas yung pag-chair, department chair. Um, moving on, while working at the University of Portland, Roy helped create a master's program in nursing. So, um, she also um, contributed to create a master's program in nursing. And at the Connell School of Nursing, she was involved in developing a PhD program in nursing. So, dagan ka siya involvement um, sa field of nursing. She also served as a visiting professor to colleges around the world. So, just ima imagine being a professor and you were just visiting colleges around the world. So, in that, uh, that colleges includes the La Sabana University in Colombia the University of Lund in Sweden, and the University of Concepcion in Chile. Since developing her adaptation model of nursing, Roy has had over 100 publications, which includes 11 books, 11 books, huh? 11 books with 
translations in 12 languages. She has been awarded four honorary doctoral degrees. So just imagine um, how many years she, she, uh, she Callister Roynag served for uh, how she, she, she studied for like how many years to get this honorary doctoral degrees. Um, she has several teaching awards and also won national awards from STTI, NANDA, and NLN. In the year 1995, Mount St. Mary's College awarded Roy at the Carondelet Medal for her contributions to the nursing field. So, um, given nga dagan siya og mga honorary doctoral degrees, it is just a more like obvious na kay siya kay sa kadagan yung na-contribute sa nursing field. I think it is very um, but deserves niya ang mga awards na nakuha since Kalisiroy Kalis is a very diligent nurse um, from her um, positions or how her life has been just centered at the field of nursing so after that in year 1995 Mount St. Mary's College awarded Roy the Carondelet Medal for contribution to the nursing field, as I've said. Later on, in 1978, she was elected to the American Academy of Nursing and is still an active fellow during that, those times. And the examples of Calisteri's works are the following. Firstly, generating middle-range theory from evidence to practice, nursing knowledge development and clinical practice, by Calista Roy, the Roy Adaptation Model, which is the third edition, Roy Adaptation Model-based research, 25 years of contributions to nursing science, introduction to nursing and adaptation model, and lastly, theory construction in nursing and adaptation model. In this portion, we will discuss the major concepts and definitions. Starting with the system. System. A system is a set of parts connected to function as a whole for some purpose and that does so by virtue or the interdependence of its parts. Roy and Andrews, 1999. In addition to having wholeness and related parts, system also have inputs, outputs, and control and feedback processes. Andrews and Roy, 1991. So, in short, system is defined as a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. Adaptation level. Adaptation level represents the condition of the life processes described on three levels as integrated, compensatory, and compromised. Roy and Andrews 1999. A person's adaptation level is a constantly changing point made up of focal, contextual, and residual stimuli, which represent the person's own standard of the range of stimuli to which one can respond with ordinary adaptive responses. Roy 18, 1984. So adaptation level from the word itself, adaptation which means the action or process of adapting or being adapted, it tells us that it is the act or process of changing to better suit in a situation. To better suit a situation. Now, we have the word adaptation problems. So adaptation problems are broad areas of concern related to adaptation. This describes the difficulties related to the indicators of positive adaptation. Roy and Andrews, 1999. Roy, 1984, states the following. It can be noted at this point that the distinction being made between adaptation problems and nursing diagnosis is based on the developing work in both of these fields. At this point, Adaptation problems are seen not as nursing diagnosis, but as areas of concern 
for the nurse related to adapting person or group within within each adaptive mode. So focal stimulus. So in adaptation level, we have encountered the word focal, contextual, and residual stimuli. So now let us first describe what is focal stimulus. So the focal stimulus is the inter the internal or external stimulus most immediately confronting the human system. For example, focal stimuli for a family include individual needs, the level of family adaptation, and changes within the family members, among the members and in the family environment. Contextual stimuli. Contextual stimuli are all other stimuli present in the situation that contribute to the effect of the focal stimulus. That is, contextual stimuli are all the environmental factors that present to the person from within or without, but which are not the center of the person's attention and or energy. Andrews and Roy, 1999 and 1991. Therefore, contextual stimuli are internal or external factors that influence the ability to respond to the focal stimulus and contribute directly to adaptation but are not the focus of attention and energy. The third type of adaptation level is the, the residual stimuli. So, the first one is the focal stimulus, the second one is the contextual stimuli, and then the third one is the residual stimuli. So now residual stimuli. Residual stimuli are environmental factors within or without the human system with effects in the current situation that are unclear. Roy and Andrews, 1999. Residual stimulus, on the other hand, is also are also internal or external environmental factors that may affect the current situation, but the influence of such variables are unknown or unclear. Residual stimuli constantly shift in response to the individual's interaction with the changing environment. Coping processes. Coping processes are innate or acquired ways of interacting with the changing environment according to Roy and Andrews, 1999. The innate coping mechanisms are genetically determined or common to the species and are generally viewed as automatic processes. Humans do not have to think, or to think about them. Acquired coping mechanisms are developed through strategies, such as learning, the experiences encountered throughout life contribute to customary responses to particular stimuli. Both innate and coping mechanisms definitions are quoted from Roy and Andrews, 1999. Therefore, the differences between innate and acquired coping mechanisms is that innate are viewed as automatic processes, while the acquired coping mechanisms are developed through strategies such as learning. There are two types of subsystems, and the first one is the regulator subsystem, which means a major coping process involving the neural, chemical, and endocrine systems. Roy and Andrews, 1999. So the second one is the cognitor subsystem. Cognitor subsystem is a major coping process involving four cognitive emotive channels, which are the So the second one is the cognitor subsystem. Cognitor subsystem is a major coping process involving four cognitive emotive channels, which are the perceptual and information processing, learning, judgment, and emotion. These are according to Roy and Andrews, 1999. Adaptive responses. 
adaptive responses are those that promote integrity in terms of the goals of human systems. Roy and Andrews, 1999. The two types of responses in an ad adaptation model by Sister Calista Roy. The first one is the adaptive responses. Oh, uh, sabang ireng! The two types of responses. First is the adaptive responses. These are those that promote integrity in terms of the goals of human systems. The second one is the effective responses. And effective responses are those that do not contribute to integri integrity in terms of the goals of the human system. Roy and Andrews, 1999. And last of the major concepts and definitions is the integrated life process. So what is an integrated life process? It refers to the adaptation level at which the structure and functions of a life process are working as a whole to meet human needs. Roma, so we have just finished the major concepts and definitions. Again, we have, top, we have tackled about the system, adaptation level, adaptation problems, the focal stimulus, contextual stimuli, the residual stimuli, the coping processes, innate coping mechanisms, acquired coping mechanisms, regulator subsystem, cognitor subsystem, adaptive responses, ineffective responses, and integrated life processes. So those words are part of the adaptation model and are the major concepts of adaptation level by Sister Kalista Goy. And that's all for the major concepts and definition. Adaptation. Adaptation is the process and of outcome whereby thinking and feeling persons as individuals or in groups using conscious awareness and choice to Mr. create Matthew human and environmental Mr. integration. Mr. S is a 53-year-old male that adaptation of bank teller and a Catholic. Positively he had been suffering from diabetes mellitus for the past 10 years. He developed a diabetic foot ulcer and he had to undergo amputation of the great and second toe of his left leg. However, the surgical wand became 
Lebanon Hill adaptation with pause and became black and one in color. Key to help so the position suggested the below the knee changes. amputation. Amputation of his leg made Mr. S's life. So there are four key concepts of Freud's adaptation model, image, which consists of nursing, health, person, and environment. Nurse Jessica so let's was assigned to take good care of concepts. Mr. S. And she decided to use nursing. the voice adaptation Roy model for Mr. S. Roy defines nursing as healthcare profession that focuses on human life so the first processes level of and patterns and emphasizes the promotion of health mode for individuals, includes families, oxygenation, groups, and society as a whole. Stable process of ventilation she defines and stable nursing process according of to her model as science and practice that expands adaptive abilities and enhances diet. person an environmental transformation. In addition, she views nursing activities as the assessment no of behavior and the no stimuli that influences adaptation. Moreover, or nursing judgments will be based on this assessment to create and plan interventions to manage protection. stimuli. Left lower forefoot is amputated. She further differentiates Senses. nursing as science no from nursing as practice discipline. According to the and Roy, Nursing Brings science is a developing system of knowledge about ML persons of that observe, classify, and relate the processes by which is persons positively affect their health status. Endocrine function. While he nursing is an as a practice discipline no is nursing scientific body of knowledge organs. used for the purpose of providing the an essential service mode. to people, Physical that is promoting is ability to affect health positively. Treatment and coping with the situation. Personal self. Self-esteem disturbed of financial burden and hospitalization. He believes in and worships God. Role person. performance model. Roy defined the person as the main focus of nursing, the, the recipient of nursing care, a living complex His adaptive system with work. internal His processes, role clarify, cognitor and regulator, acting to maintain mode. adaptation in poor adaptive with the which is the good physiological self-concept, role function and interdependence. No one is capable of helping him so the person is the adaptive system he that will adapt to the changes to external and internal stimuli. According to her model, Model. A person the is a biofacial social system. being in constant the interaction with a changing environment. Healing one after they use of innate the and acquired mechanisms to adapt. Ago, the model includes was people as individuals in groups such as and families, and organizations, back, communities, the one was then and society as a whole. With pause health. Over the Roy area. defines health as the state and process up of in a local and becoming integrated from in there, a whole person. They referred it is a refractory hospital of where he was admitted for one month and four days. Of the person During the, the hospital stay, Roy derived this definition from the thought that, that the adaptation one is a process of promoting physiological, psychological, so, and social integrity below the knee amputation implies an unimpaired condition leading to completeness or unity. In her adaptation model, it also states that health is an inevitable dimension of person's life and is represented by a health illness continuum. Environment Environment is all the conditions, circumstances, and influences surrounding and affecting the development and behavior of a person or group with particular consideration of the mutuality of a person and earth resources that includes focal, contextual, and residual stimuli. So this changing environment stimulates the person to make adaptive responses. Now let's talk about scientific assumptions. Systems of matter and energy progress to a higher level of complex self-organization and relationships, including acceptance, protection, and the fostering of interdependence. Self-organization is the individual's behavior or how we interact among ourselves. And when we say about interdependence, it is the attachment or reliance on someone. Persons and dirt have common patterns and integral relationships, while persons and environment transformation are created in human consciousness. An integration of human and environment meaning results in adaptation. Human consciousness is our uh, creative process. It means our ideas how we prepare or create something that we use in our daily lives. And for nurses, this is what we gain and learn, the knowledge we get and to know how to handle people with illness, to get them uh, recovery. With this, nurses uh, can be flexible to work.
Humans, by their decisions, are accountable for the integration of the creative process or the human consciousness or our creative ideas and human's thinking and feeling made human action. When we say immediate action, is to be flexible enough to work. And for nurses, we get to know how to use the all kinds of tools and objects. Philosophical assumptions. God is intimately revealed in the diversity of creation and is the common destiny of creation. People have mutual relationships with the world and God. A person uses human creative abilities and is accountable for processes. When we say creative abilities, it is how we adapt or be flexible, flexibly handle the situation. What we means be what we means by flexible is to enough to do work with gained knowledge. Now let's talk about theoretical assertions. Roy's model mainly focuses on a person's health and experiences the environment stimuli. It made a response. A response could be adaptive or ineffective. When we say adaptive response, have a positive outcome. It promotes integrity and achieve a person's goal, survival, growth, and mastery. When we say ineffective, it failed to reach the goal. Adaptation occurs when the person responds positively or the adaptive response to environment changes that promote the integrity of a person which leads to health and optimal level of wellness. When we talk about optimal level of wellness, this is the favorable or best state you have achieved. A positive response allows you to nurture your own health. There are four adaptive modes of responseless stimuli. The first one is physical adaptive mode, self-concept group, identity adaptive, role function, adaptive mode, and interdependence adaptive mode. When we say physical adaptive mode, it is concerned about how humans interact with the environment and psychologically meet the basic needs. The need of nutrition, oxygenation, activity, rest, and protection. The second mode is the self-concept group identity adaptive. It concerned with the needs and how to act in society. It composed of the physical self and personal self. Physical self is how we look on ourselves or the body image. When we say about personal self, it is the self-ideal and more spiritual self. The third mode is the role function adaptive mode. It describes the expectations about how one person behaves towards another person. And the fourth mode is the interdependence adaptive mode or the significance others. It describes the interactions of people to give and receive love, respect, and value. When we talk about significant others, it could be our spouse, child, friend, a parent, or God. Or let's say his or her social support system. Control processes. There are two subsystems of control processes, the stabilizer and innovator subsystems. Stabilizer subsystem, it maintains the system which involves regulation of daily activity. Stabilizer, it means to be stable. Uh, for example, you are flexible and work, then maintain that value of a as a flexible person. For innovator, it concerns with creativity, change, and growth. So we innovate something or we change something to be better and to be more useful. Logical form. Roy's adaptation model of nursing can be either deductive or inductive. When we say deductive, it forms typology of factors related to adaptation levels of persons. Uh, adaptive is based on a reason, while inductive is true experience. Roy developed the four adaptive modes from research and nursing practice experiences. Roy built on the conceptual framework of adaptation and developed a step-by-step -step model in which nurse used the nursing process to promote adaptation both in health and illness. Acceptance by the nursing community. Practice, education, and research. 
in reserve practice, it outlines the features of the discipline. It considers goals, values, the individual, and the group of patients, and the practitioner intervention. So when we talk about practice, it's how we learn, act, be flexible, and to interact with the patient. For nurses, these have been used to understand, plan, and direct nursing practices in the core of individual patients. And for education, it guided the nursing education and distinguished nursing science from medical by having the content of these areas taught in separate courses. It promotes the adaptation of a person in adaptive modes, both health and illness. And for the research, the model continues to degenerate testable hypotheses and continues to make a significant contribution to the body of nursing knowledge. Some areas remain for future development as healthcare progresses. Application of Sister Calista Roy's Adaptation Model Case History of Mr. Matthew S. Mr. Matthew S. is a 53-year-old male, married, a bank teller, and a Catholic. He had been suffering from diabetes mellitus for the past 10 years. He developed a diabetic foot ulcer, and he had to undergo amputation of the great and second toe of his left leg. However, the surgical wound became non-healing, with pus, and became black in color. So the position suggested below the knee amputation. Amputation of his leg made Mr. S's life stressful. He was anxious about changes in body image, financial burden, and hospitalization. Nurse Jessica was assigned to take good care of Mr. S, and she decided to use the Royce adaptation model for Mr. S. So the first level of assessment, the physiologic physical mode, includes oxygenation, stable process of ventilation, and stable process of gas exchange. Nutrition, he is on a diabetic diet, which is 1,200 kcal and non-vegetarian. Elimination, no signs of infections, no pain during micturition or urination or defecation. Activity and rest, taking adequate rest. Protection, left lower forefoot is amputated. Senses, no pain sensation from the wound site. Fluids and electrolytes, drinks up approximately 2,000 ml of water. Neurological function, he is conscious and oriented. Endocrine function, he is on insulin, no signs and symptoms of endocrine disorders. The self-concept mode, physical self, he is anxious about changes in the body image but accepting treatment and coping with the situation. Personal self, self-esteem disturbed of financial burden and hospitalization, he believes in and worships God. Role performance mode, he was the earning member in the family. His role shift is not compensated. His son doesn't have any work. His role clarify is not achieved. Interdependence mode. He has a good relationship with the neighbors, good interaction with friends and relatives, but he believes no one is capable of helping him at this moment. He says, all are under financial constraints. He was moderately active in local social activities. The second level assessment. The focal stimulus. Non-healing one after amputation of the great and second toe of left leg four weeks ago, a wand was first found in ejection between the first and second toe, four months back. The wand was then healing and gradually increased in size, with pus collected over the area. He first showed up in a local hospital. From there, they referred him to a tertiary hospital where he was admitted for one month and four days. During the hospital stay, his great and second toe was amputated, but the surgical wand turned to non-healing with pus and black color. So, the physician suggested below the knee amputation, amputation that made him come to the hospital and underwent plastic surgery three weeks before. The contextual stimuli. Known case DM for the past 10 years. Was an oral hypoglycemic agent for initial two years, but switched to insulin and using it for eight years now. Not wearing footwear in house and premises.